Version 1.8.0 should make some people sweat. And those people are probably Vaporeon users. Welcome back to another Pokemon Sleep video. It's Bro Vinny here. Before we talk about the update, I just need to make some corrections on yesterday's video about the summer event. And it is that Dodgeo and Swablu, the two flying type Pokemon, although I count Swablu more as a dragon type because it's not usable unless it evolves, they don't actually spawn at Cyan Beach. This is a new graphic that's been updated since yesterday's video. You can find it on my Discord under Infographics. And you'll see that now Psyduck is now put into the Cyan Beach picture. Swablu and Dodrio's line have been removed. And this one's not a correction, this one's an addition to yesterday's video. We now have confirmation that the good sleep day will happen during the summer event. Does it really matter? Well, unless you're really low on drowsy power in the area that you're going to hit, I don't think it matters that much as long as you can meet the drowsy power requirement for Cramorant. The night of the full moon, the day that gets the most bonuses during the good sleep day event, will land on the Saturday of the summer festival event. Now onto the important part of this video. Why should you be sweating with this update? Version 1.8.0. That's coming on the 11th of June. Well, that's because Heracross is getting a buff in both its frequency and its main skill chance. But if you remember from my Vaporeon video, my Evolutions guide, you will know that Vaporeon is at the top of the ingredient magnet skill trigger of all Pokemon. But coming very close in second place was actually Heracross. So if you have invested in a Vaporeon, for example, like Piggy, you should be a little bit afraid of this update because is there a chance that Heracross could overtake Vaporeon? Now, based on our history of updates and buffs, generally speaking, the ranking between Pokemon don't tend to change too much when they buff a Pokemon. For example, when they buffed Sudowoodoo a few weeks ago, Yes, it got slightly better, but it didn't beat Ampharos, which was already better than Sudowoodoo to begin with, even after the buff. And thankfully, that remains to be true, as far as I can tell, regarding Heracross. When I did the calculations, and I'll show you my calculations towards the end of the video if you're interested, if we only include main skill chance times 1.05, so 5% increase, and ignore this part because I actually don't know what that means. How much is frequency shortened slightly? If the frequency shortening slightly is in significant amounts, then there's no problem here. Vaporeon is still the top choice. Not only that, Heracross cannot evolve and therefore you lose out on one main skill C compared to evolving an Eevee into a Vaporeon. So overall, Vaporeon is still better. The other Pokemon that's getting a buff is Pinsir. And it's almost like these buffs are meant to go hand in hand with the Summer Festival event. It was just yesterday when I made the Summer Festival info video where I said, look, I'm not in a rush to hunt any of the bug types. That's because bug types aren't really needed yet in this game. Unless you really need a pincer because your Bulbasaur doesn't focus on honey. Or maybe you need a pincer for apples so that you can do cacao on Absol. And I also said that Heracross wasn't really necessary because it's outclassed by Vaporeon. And it's almost like they were listening to my video yesterday and then today they were like, hang on, let's buff the bug types so that they might become a little more relevant during this summer festival event. All right, so how about Pinsir? I did mention that Venusaur is the Pokemon of choice for honey farming if you've got a mono ingredient honey. And that's because Venusaur not only overall farms more honey, and I'll show you the numbers in a moment, it can also evolve twice. So even with the increased carry limit, Venusaur, if it's fully evolved from Bulbasaur, has a higher carry limit. And of course, you also save on two main skill seeds. With this 5% buff on Pinsir, thankfully, Venusaur is still the Pokemon of choice for honey farming. And we'll look at the numbers there as well, but let's go through the rest of the update so that you don't have to save for the numbers if you don't want to. 
once again, we're getting an expansion on our item bag, not the ingredient bag. I know a lot of people are begging for the ingredient bag to go up. And look, it probably will when level 60 gets released, but they've decided it's not the right time. Why are they increasing the item bag carry limit? That's also probably in preparation for the summer event. Because if you remember, we've got the candy Cramomatic, which can convert Pokemon specific candies, which do not take up any of your bag space, convert it into type specific candy M, which does take up your bag space. So if you were planning to convert a thousand of your Wobbuffet candies like myself, and I'm going to first assume that we don't ever get any great success, but if you do get great success with the Cramomatic, you'll get two times the candy M, which is actually more candies than what you put in. With a thousand Wobbuffet candies, I can feed the machine 25 times. Of course, there's a limit of four times per day over seven days, which is 28 times. So we're not quite at the limit yet. If I assume maybe a 10% success rate, maybe I'll get 27, 28 candy M's, which does take up bag space, but probably not a hundred bag space worth. So an expansion of the item bag still feels like it's a little bit overdone compared to expanding ingredient bag. Two other fixes I'm very interested in one is that some texts will be adjusted or unified. They're very cryptic about that, but we have a suspicion they might change the definition of helping speed or maybe even frequency in order to match the other translations. So this might be a, just an English translation thing. Alarm issues with your Pokemon Go Plus Plus for countries that have daylight saving time. This has always been a problem. So thankfully they can actually fix that. I wasn't even sure that they could because the Plus Plus is a separate device. I wasn't sure that in that connection between the phone and the Plus Plus that they could actually adjust the software there. And I guess they can. Will this fix the issue of the Plus Plus desyncing for things like drowsy power? Well, that I'm not sure. We'll just have to wait and see. As promised, let's look at the numbers before and after the buff for Pinsir and Heracross. Now I'm going to use Vaporeon, Slarking and Heracross for this comparison and I've set them all to level 50. Neutral stats, I've set myself to not sleep because for skill specialists, you really shouldn't be using them to sleep anyway. You should be using them during daytime in order to maximize your returns because you can't collect their skills during sleep. I'm assuming maximum energy on all Pokemon by giving everyone max healing. On average, a Vaporeon of these stats will trigger 4.2 times a day, Slarking 3.75 times a day, and Heracross 3.83 times a day. So now you can see that Vaporeon is number one, Heracross is number two, and Slarking is number three. But there are situations where Slarking can overtake Heracross. It's to do with the inventory limit. And if you had Berry Finding S, then sometimes Slarking actually triggers more than Heracross. But we're going to put that discussion aside. We're just going to say Vaporeon is number one, Heracross is number two. And the calculation to see the buff is very simple. You simply multiply that 3.83 by 1.05 because it's a 5% buff. You get 4.02 triggers in a day which means that Vaporeon is still better, but not by a lot. Although what I haven't included is the slightly reduced frequency. If we included that, that number will go up a little bit more, but I just don't know how much. When they say slightly, I assume that it's gonna be a very negligible amount. We'll just have to see, and if there's any changes, and for some reason, if Heracross overtakes Vaporeon, I'll be sure to let you guys know. But does that mean you should use Heracross now that it's very close to Vaporeon? I still think Vaporeon is going to be better, not only because it's got a better skill trigger rate, but also you can evolve it, save a main skill seed. Even Slarking has its benefits because Slarking can evolve twice, so it saves you two main skill seeds, even though it has a slightly lower trigger rate compared to the other two skill specialists for Ingredient Magnet. So even Slarking has its perks that Heracross doesn't because it cannot evolve. 
The carry limit is not considered in this discussion and that's because I assume that you guys are using your skill specialist properly and you're not letting them get to the carry limit, so reaching the inventory limit. For example, by going to sleep with them overnight. But if you don't log into the game often, it is a nice buff to have more inventory limit, especially for skill specialists. As for Pinsir, I've set up the calculator much the same way, maximum healing, no stats, farming all day, no sleep. In terms of the total honeys that a pincer can farm before the update, it's 64. And 70 if it's Venusaur. So about 10% better to run a Venusaur and you have a larger inventory limit and also you have two skill levels up. So does the buff from this update improve pincer enough to beat Venusaur? And it's as simple as taking 64.02, which is the number of honeys that you can farm, with pincer and multiply that by 1.05 representing the 5% increase and you get 67 honeys pulling pincer much closer to Venusaur than it was before. So pincer is still a worse honey farmer than Venusaur but it's nice to see because you can use pincer if you made a mistake in investing Venusaur earlier on like myself. I've got a tomato, potato, Venusaur as opposed to a triple honey Venusaur. So then I can catch a pincer as my main honey farmer. Alternatively, because of the lack of ingredient specialists that do apples, especially at base level, it's a good idea to have a pincer to do apples as well. So having this buff definitely helps. What is interesting is that with this buff, now let's take a look at apple farming. The common apple farmers are Pinsir, Absol, and Delibird. Although I would much prefer Delibird focus on eggs instead, but if I were to just compare apple farming, these three are the only apple farmers that are also ingredient specialists. At level 50, these are their stats, assuming neutral stats and everyone's just going to have maximum healing all the time. Pinsir gets 45 apples, Absol 48, and Delibird also 48, with Absol being at the top. But now, if we multiply the 45.73 by 1.05, a 5% buff, to Pinsir, at 48.01, it now matches Delhi bird in apple farming. Still very, very slightly, insignificant amount of slightly less than Absol. But Pinsir is also getting an inventory buff. It originally has more inventory than either of the other options, but now it's going to get more. There's going to be an increase of three carry limit, which means that it will be easier to use Pinsir, even though yes, it's still the worst of the three apple farmers, but it's actually going to be easier to use pincer because if you don't collect frequently enough, given how much apples drop at a time, five apples or eight apples, even worse if it's Absol, eight apples, 12 apples, having a higher carry limit will actually make it easier to play. Now, if I make them all level 60, now I don't like to do this often, this is purely theoretical because by the time level 60 comes along, they might have done a number of other changes that buffs Delhi Bird and buffs Absol, or maybe level 60 just completely changes the game. So I don't like to look at this often. I would still prefer if you guys just focus on my level 30 comparisons. But if theoretically we were to look at level 60 being unlocked, Absol is still number one in apple farming, followed by Delhi Bird, but very, very closely followed by Pinsir. In this case, if we give 5% buff to Pinsir, it actually farms more apples than either Absol or Delhi Bird. And that's not even including the fact that it has a higher carry limit. So these numbers assume that you collect every production. If you don't collect every production, you're gonna get more apples with Pinsir, making Pinsir now a theoretically king of apple farming, which used to be Absol if we considered level 60. Again, take level 60 comparisons with a grain of salt because a lot can change before level 60 gets unlocked. Maybe by then, Absol will get a buff as well. Let me know what you guys think, which Pokemon should do which ingredient from now on. 
Should we look at having Pinsa do apples? Or should Pinsa do pure honey? Should it just be Venusaur doing pure honey? Should Apsil just focus on cacao? Should Delibird focus on eggs? Or should Delibird do some apples? Let me know what you guys think the spread should be. But to me, at this very moment, I still believe in this mono ingredient spread. I don't think this has shifted that much. With cacao being mainly done by Absol and an optional alternative of it doing apple, but probably not having one for each ingredient. So then you need an alternative ingredient farmer like Pinsir doing apples. Thank you for watching guys. If this video helped, make sure you like and subscribe.